back. Hello and welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast sponsored by loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeu. And on this episode, we'll be looking back at the victory over Wren at the Emirates. And of course, looking ahead to that mouthwatering quarterfinal tie against Napoli. It doesn't get much tougher than that. I'll be hoping to provide you a little bit of insight into Napoli uh, and how they fared under new manager Carlo Ancelotti. Well, I say new, he started at the beginning of the season. Uh, so we'll be looking at Napoli a little bit. And of course, we'll be providing further insight uh, on our Italian football podcast, our sister show, Simply Serie A. So do check that out in the coming weeks where I'm sure this will be a huge, huge talking point. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Right, let's get down to business. Let's start by talking about the brilliant victory over Wren. Uh, it took place at the Emirates on Thursday night. Thankfully, it wasn't one of those ridiculous 6 p.m. kickoffs. Uh, nobody had any issues getting there, I don't think, anyway. Um, but before I talk about the match, before I talk about uh, our progress into the next round of the Europa League, I want to start off by having a little bit of a moan. And I know it's not, you know, you're probably sitting there thinking, We've just beaten Wren. We're in the quarterfinals of a European competition. What on earth has this guy got to moan about this week? Well, I'll tell you what I've got to moan about. And it's about our fans. Um, and, you know, I appreciate that people have jobs and people have work and people can't always get to the stadium uh, very early. Uh, but I was particularly annoyed yesterday when I turned up at the Emirates and I got into the ground probably at about... 20 past seven, something around that. Uh, I got in the ground, I looked to my right and the Wren section was absolutely packed to the rafters. They were making noise. It was colorful. It was passionate. It was everything that you want to see from, from football fans. It was, uh, it was brilliant. It was, it was actually brilliant to see. And, you know, that's one of the things I've looked forward to in this Europa League because the games, let's be realistic, in the group stages and, you know, the early stages of the competition are not all that exciting at times. Often we're playing against teams that are way below our level. But I always look forward to seeing the travelling support because for me, you know, that's a huge part of it. I mean, we saw, I think it was Cologne last season who came there, made a real, you know, a real hoo-ha made a real fuss and all eyes were on them. And that's brilliant to see. I really enjoy that kind of stuff. But just take a step back for a moment and just imagine that you're an Arsenal player and you're about to take part in this huge European tie. Um, and we've obviously gone out to Wren the week before and let ourselves down and suffered the 3-1 defeat. And let's be realistic. I know it's easy to look back in hindsight and say we were always going to qualify, but we had to win by two goals. Um, and, you know, had Wren conceded, we'd have had to have scored three just to take it to extra time. So let's not underestimate the size of this task. It was a mammoth task for Arsenal to overturn this. And so you're an Arsenal player and you come out of that tunnel and you look to your left at the home section and it's bloody half empty. And you look to your right and Wren's have packed out their, their situation, uh, this allocation, sorry, uh, which was a bigger allocation, by the way, than away sides normally get at the Emirates. So fair play to them, credit to them. They've packed it out. They're singing. They're up and down throughout the game. And you look to the left and the Arsenal fans are kind of half asleep and half of them haven't bothered to turn up on time. Now, for me, what's really frustrating about that is it's not people that are working and have got to the stadium late. It's just people that prefer to stand in the concourse and have a beer than watch the actual game. I mean, what's the point in going? What is the point in going? You can have a beer before, you can have a beer after, you can even have a beer at half time. But when the game is about to kick off, whether it's before the game or at half time, you need to be in your seat. You need to help create an atmosphere. And I honestly believe that the only reason the atmosphere at the Emirates uh, last night was any good was because of the way the team started. It was nothing to do with the fans, you know, making it tough for Ren. It was all about the fact that we'd kicked off the game and, and gone sort of gung-ho and really laid into them. Yes, the players need to encourage you and the players need to get you up for it. But as fans in a game like that, I think it's our responsibility to create an atmosphere as the teams walk out onto the pitch. And it just doesn't happen at the Emirates often enough. Now, I want to talk about the backstory to this game a little bit. And I know it sounds like I'm, I'm still moaning. I'm not. Um, I'm just talking about, you know, the, the background, the story leading into this game and, and how important it is and how it puts things into context. Now, if you look at the first leg, of course, we went out to Wren. We let ourselves down. I've said it already. The Socrates red card 
absolutely killed us. I felt that Unai Emery probably mismanaged the game after that in the sense that he allowed Henrik Mkhitaryan to play at right back for the remainder of the game. And uh, I didn't think his changes on the night made any sense and they certainly didn't come off. So I was disappointed, but I always felt that Arsenal had enough to turn this around at the Emirates. But from a Wren perspective now, take your Arsenal hats off for a moment. Let's, let's look at the truth of it all. Alex Lacazette has had a suspension overturned. Now, regardless of whether you think it was harsh or not, that doesn't often happen, does it? And so Wren probably feel pretty hard done by uh, about that. And then you've got the whole switching the, the legs around. You know, Arsenal was supposed to play at home first. It is said that you, you know, you'd pr- most likely prefer to play away. That's kind of the general consensus amongst European football fans is that you'd rather go away first uh, and play at home second. So Wren will have been disappointed with that as well. Um you could argue that Wren probably wouldn't have had the lead they did if it was the other way round. But, uh, you know, they've got a right to complain about it. And it must feel from their perspective that UEFA have just, you know, really shafted them. Anyway, let's let's get into the match. I've had my moans. Um, you know, I know it worked in our favour this time, but I didn't think that UEFA handled that fairly. Um And I am an Arsenal supporter, of course, but I'm a football fan, first of all. If I didn't like football, I wouldn't like Arsenal. So I'm a football fan, first of all. And for me, the way UEFA handled things wasn't right. Um, And I can understand why Wren were moaning. I've I've read lots of things on Twitter, Arsenal fans going, oh, Wren are really starting to get on my nerves, really starting to piss us off, etc., etc. Well, if that was the other way around, I can tell you Twitter would have been in meltdown with Arsenal fans complaining about it. So, you know, let's let's be fair. Um, Let's kind of practice what we preach. You know, I, I feel as though UEFA handled it all wrong and and Wren have every right to complain. It's done now, uh, but that's my two pence on on that piece. Anyway, the game started and Arsenal started really explosively and that was pleasing to see because that was what exactly what needed to happen, wasn't it? Um, there was always that fear that if we got to half time, we'd start panicking a little bit. But Arsenal came out like a house on fire and Unai Emery stuck to the system that worked so well against Manchester United. Obviously, uh, Shkodran Mustafi had to come in uh, for Socrates and he gave us a couple of heart attacks in the second half. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, but that was an enforced change. And of course, Petr Cech started in goal. Uh, I think whether you believe that Bern Leno is better or not, and I do, uh, you know, Unai Emery's given his word to Petr Cech on this and he was never going to go back on it. So, you know, all the, the talk in the lead up about starting Leno for me was a little bit pointless because I didn't feel that Unai Emery would ever uh, go back on his word and allow Leno to to start that game this is Petr Cech's competition. It's his last season as a professional. And so I don't think Emery will ever go back on that. But we started the game, some brilliant play on the right-hand side involving Ainsley Maitre Niles, Aaron Ramsey. And there was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to turn it in. Um, and what was really impressive about that finish was as the ball come across, a lot of strikers would have swung their right foot at that and maybe made a hash of it. But what Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang did was just sort of turn his left leg it into an angle and he was kind of using the pace on the cross already to just turn it in uh, towards goal and and once that went in the stadium erupted the atmosphere went up a notch and all of a sudden Wren were, were panicking and Arsenal had them on the back foot um, then there was another uh, another breakaway um, and there was a little dink over the top Alexander Lacazette uh, knew he was offside kind of just let it go the whole sort of defense and our players as well, actually, including Mesut Ozil, kind of turned off and Aubameyang just dinked it to the far post. And incoming was Ainsley Maitland-Niles, who I thought had an excellent game. He had an excellent game against United as well, but I thought he was particularly special uh, last night. He popped up at the far post, composed, calm, headed it down into the ground and into the back of the net. And, you know, there was no stopping that. And Arsenal all of a sudden had turned the deficit around within, what, 15 minutes or so? Unbelievable. Uh, the perfect start for Unai Emery's team. Uh, Ainsley Maitland-Niles as well has spoken since and, and spoken about the fact that Unai Emery has encouraged him that when he's playing as a wing back to get into the box to attack that far post when the crosses come in. So the manager's instructions paying off there and fair play to Unai Emery. You know, I have criticised him this season um, and I stick by the criticism that I've given him because it wasn't done in, in, in any malice. It was done because I want to see the best for this football team and... 
there were certain decisions that I disagreed with and everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's absolutely fine. Mine has slightly changed in the last few weeks. I feel as though Unai Emery has proved that he's worthy and he's proved that he can cut it when it matters. And so fair play to him, you know, onwards and upwards uh, for Arsenal. So 2-0, of course, half time comes and then you're thinking, right, you know, what do we do? Do we go out and look for the third? Because at the moment we're already through, but knowing that conceding one would knock us out. I think Arsenal started the second half a little bit sloppy, a little bit cagey. And I think it allowed Ren to gain confidence. They started to grow um, in the early stages of the second half. They had an effort that hit the post. They had a couple of opportunities where they got in behind. Unfortunately, we were saved by the flag. Um, But it was worrying at one point. Ren did give it a go. Um, I thought that they were, were up for the physical battle. They were putting themselves about. There were all sorts of challenges flying in. The referee, in my opinion, didn't handle it great. Um, I thought that he kind of made things difficult for himself with some of the stuff he'd let allowed to go. And then when it came to booking other players, he had a problem doing that. Um, and, and kind of the crowd and, and obviously the staff of the two sides, particularly in the technical areas, particularly from the French side, were starting to get in his face a little bit every time something happened. I felt he lost a little bit of control of the game. But fortunately, Arsenal didn't lose control of the game and we broke away um, after we made the changes, Mikitarian and Iwobi came on um, and I thought they made a massive difference. They injected some energy, some urgency into our play. Um, a ball came across and there was Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang at the far post to tap it in, score his second of the night, Arsenal's third and not put the tie beyond doubt, but make sure that if Ren did get a goal and if we were to concede, it wouldn't knock us out. It would have taken the thing to extra time. So although it wasn't the winner or the goal that completely sealed the tie and put it beyond all doubt it was a very very important goal um and then of course pierre emerick Aubameyang went searching for his mask behind the advertising boards and he's taken a lot of stick from that i was listening to talk sport actually on my drive home and people were phoning up complaining about it one of the presenters i think it was jason cundy surprise surprise uh, was getting on to Aubameyang and saying that it was arrogant and it was um poor and it was poor timing and this and that well for me you know, it's not that big a deal, is it? He's he's put on a mask of a superhero. And and let's have it right. You know, this is not the first time that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang's done something like that. If you look back in his Dortmund days, I think he'd done it multiple times. Um, it's a celebration. It's something that we'll remember the game for. And, you know, people are saying, oh, but what if Ren had gone down the other end and scored? He'd have looked stupid. Well, not really, in my opinion. It's just the same as doing a silly dance when you score or a practiced handshake or something. What's the difference? I'd like to know you guys' thoughts on that um, as well. Tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Pierre emerick Aubameyang uh, representing Wakanda <laughs> last night at the Emirates. But yeah, I thought look, overall it was a professional job, wasn't it? Arsenal got the job done. Um, at times it wasn't spectacular. It wasn't great, but we kind of done the damage in the early stages and then it was about game management. And on this occasion, I thought Unai Emery's game management was spot on. Uh, Whereas in the first leg, I thought it was completely wrong. So let's give him credit where it's due. Um, I'm always happy to do that. Those of you who listen to this show regularly will know that. Uh, So credit to Unai Emery, managed the game really well. And Arsenal are through to the last eight where we will now face... Napoli, we know that, um, recording this just moments after the draw has been made. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's as tough as it could have got. That really is as tough as it could have got. Napoli uh, are a side who are in transition under Carlo Ancelotti. Maurizio Sarri was there last season. That was probably the closest they've gone to to challenging Juve or anybody for the Scudetto in a long time. Unfortunately, they fell apart at the end. Um, But, you know, did they fall apart or... Did they just lose out to a very, very, uh, very strong Juventus side? Because for me, Juventus have been so dominant in the last few years in Serie A that it's hard to criticise the teams that haven't been able to compete with them. And, And maybe we should be focusing more on how good and how dominant they are. So, you know, Napoli... Our second at the moment in Serie A, they're having a a good season again. You know, when you look at the teams that they're above, the Milans, the Inters, Romas, Lazios, you have to praise them for being in second because they are punching above their weight. 
and, and that should not be forgotten. I think people only had these expectations for them this season because of how close they went last season. So they're kind of the victims of their own success. But, you know, Napoli are not going to win the Scudetto. They're nowhere near Juventus. They lost to them uh, a couple of weeks back as well, which means that the Scudetto was done. Um, You know, any doubt that Juventus were going to throw it away, they weren't ever going to anyway, realistically, but any doubt was erased that night. And so, uh, speaking to my colleagues over at Simply Serie A, there is a real feeling in Italy amongst the media that Carlo Ancelotti has said, you know, we're going to finish second. We're OK here. Um, we're doing OK. And even if we finish second or third, what difference does it make? We're still going to qualify for the Champions League. But now it's time to focus on the Europa League. And it feels as though Carlo Ancelotti is is really eager to win this tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the coming weeks you see uh, players rested by Napoli and and you know Carlo Ancelotti's proven in the past particularly during his Milan days that he is a European manager that's what his bread and butter is he's he's very good in European competition he kind of values that I would say more than more than domestic success as well and I'm not saying that he'd rather win the Europa League than the Scudetto but he'd probably rather win the Europa League than the Coppa Italia for example that is how Carlo Ancelotti sees it they've got some really dangerous players um Lorenzo Insigne being the main man, Jose Calejon. There, there are lots of players uh, there that can cause us problems. Of course, Koulibaly is a centre-back that we seem to be linked with in every transfer window. For me, I can't see us ever forking out the funds required to get him in. Um, but this will be a really, really difficult tie. Um, I'm recording this as soon as the draw has been made. So I don't know yet if they've switched the legs around or, or what's going on with that. You never know with UEFA these days whether we clash with Chelsea and, and whatnot. Um, but either way, going to the San Paolo will be very, very difficult. There's a really, really good atmosphere there. They're a really um, hostile crowd and they really do get behind their team, I think. Uh, I think that we will end up playing at home first because Chelsea would have been at home on the same night as us and we come lower down in the priority list for some reason. So I'd expect that that tie is changed and that we take them on at the Emirates first. And for me, that's not ideal. I'd have rather gone to the San Paolo first uh, to try and get something and hope that any sort of mishaps could be rectified at the Emirates. This way, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. I think we've got to be very conservative in that first leg and make sure we don't concede that away goal. Because I'll tell you one thing, Napoli, when they get the bit between their teeth at the San Paolo, uh, not many teams can hold them off. And and so it's a real concern. It's, it's the toughest tie we could have got. And we've also found out that we would now face Villarreal or Valencia in the next round, which means if we do get through, if we do go all the way to the final, we could potentially face Chelsea. And uh, not sure if I fancy going all the way to Baku to play Chelsea, but there we go. Uh, Some things need to be done. And, uh, you know, it's a European tie and you end up playing your neighbours. But hey-ho, that's how it works. That's how the draw is. And, you know, like I said, I just want to emphasise that I feel this is a really, really difficult tie. And, Will Unai Emery prioritise this over the Premier League? I, I don't know. It's it's really difficult to say. I was having this conversation with a friend earlier on as to whether he should do that. But the fact is that we're in fourth place. It's not like uh, when Arsene Wenger was at the helm and we went all the way to the semis, but the league thing was done and we were never going to finish in the top four. This is different. We're in the hunt for both. So you've got to find the balance, haven't you, between uh, sort of not throwing away one or the other. Uh, But let me know how you guys feel about the draw. Tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll be back next week with a full length podcast. Uh, We'll be talking, I'm sure, more about Europe and and more about various other things. Uh, But until then, guys, take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, an Arsenal free weekend. So uh, spend it with your loved ones, with your wives. Give them the attention that they crave and miss out on every time Arsenal play Uh, and uh, yeah speak to you guys soon all the best take care